Hello, this is Kevin Prince, and I'm with Black Riders of San Antonio, and today's gift is Leon Collins. Hey, everybody, how's it going? It's Leon Collins, a.k.a. Western L. Collins. Solar system, looking for a shooting star, hoping that I catch you when you see a UFO. There we go, there we go. When you see a UFO, there we go, there we go. And so, our guest, Weston Collins, is going to share a brief summary and also read from his book, which is Black Sci Fi. So, here I am for you. Thanks. Well, just to let everybody know, the, uh, the title of my book is Deorum, Gods Among Us. Um, it's about a 13-year-old child named uh, John Montgomery. And he basically discovers that he's the descendant of the Egyptian god, Montu, who's the god of war. Um, he basically learns that he's not the only descendant and that there are others just like him out there. Um, he also learns about a prophecy that says that one of these new gods, one of these descendants, is supposed to become god of the new world. And basically, he's trying to figure out where he fits in all that, whether he's the one to become the new um, omnipotent god, or if he's just part of you know, another god's plan. Um, it's really exciting to see him uh, figure out what is what and who is who and uh, also deal with just being 13 and you know not only is he hitting puberty but he's becoming a god as well and how does he balance being human and also um, a deity so you know it's a, it's 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 fun it's it's thrilling there's a lot of action um it'll, it'll definitely keep you on your toes it'll make you laugh you have like a favorite like so I, I tried to make that portion of it as real as I possibly especially with Black Mom, because you know, you know, here's the thing, you know, there is zero tolerance for any kind of foolishness, mythology, whatever. You know, my son is missing, and that is all I know. So that is all that's that's happening right now. Anything else, I am not entertaining. You know, and and I and I get that, and, I, and you know, it's funny that uh, <clears throat> I think that's a mark that um, some other writers miss, you know, that small level of, like, realism, you know, to just kind of keep people in it. That's, um, that's very interesting because when you read, you know, any time that I think of anything that has to do with black people, I think of soul. And I think of, you know, when you read books or you listen to music or you watch a movie, you know, there's the soul aspect of it. And it's like, you know, like you were saying, like a lot of writers miss that mark of what makes you an amazing black writer, which is the fact that you have the ability to put soul. You have that level of realism that other writers, you know, don't have, you know, or have in a different way. So, you know, it's very interesting. Um, so... Before we get into super dope questions, we're going to take a brief break and we'll be back with you Afro Pins and Conversations. All right. And this is Kevin Prince, and we have our guest, Weston Collins, author of this super dope book. And how do you say the name? I don't want to butcher it. It's Darum Gods Among Us. All right. Darum Gods Among Us. De Orum. De Orum. Gods Among Us. Yes. So basically, we're going to get into some amazing questions. I had a couple for you. Um, what inspired you to write sci-fi? Well, believe it or not, uh, what inspired me to write sci-fi were um, specifically two authors. Um, one was H.G. Wells, and the other was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Now... The reason why they inspired me 
to write sci-fi is because I've always had an imagination. And as long as far back as I can remember, I've always um, I've always felt the need for my imagination to become reality. And those two authors, they have done exactly that. Their imaginations have become reality. Because if you ever read a, you know, I mean, like most people have, you know, read a H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, a lot of the inventions, a lot of the, uh, the mechanics behind things, you know, a lot of that stuff had never existed before, never even heard of before. But then after people read these books and examined them, they, it was so practical that they became reality, you know, and it was, you know, it was just a situation where his science fiction became science fact, which was amazing to me. Um, the other thing with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and, you know, probably one of my, even though I have an affinity for villains, you know, I love, you know, Hannibal Lecter, Professor Moriarty, like, all that stuff, like, that's kind of like, I mean, if you look at me right now, I mean, look, I have a Bowser T, you know, but, you know, Bowser t-shirt, King Koopa hat, you know, come on. But, um, you know, the thing with uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is that the way that Sherlock Holmes examined crime scenes and some of his methods for um, solving, uh, you know, mysteries and the way that, you know, he took certain parts of, uh, you know, certain parts of science and then applied them to actually solving crimes and things like that. None of that had ever been done before. But then all of a sudden, Sherlock Holmes comes around and shows exactly how you can use science to solve murder mysteries and, you know, thefts and whatever else. Um, you know, Scotland Yard, the FBI, CIA, um, no matter what law enforcement entity you could ever think of, you know, they have adopted these methods. And now Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's science fiction has become science fact, which, you know, one day, I, I mean, I could only hope to, you know, leave my mark on the world the way they did, and that's pretty much I'm the one to say, but the way things are going, I just made You know, I grew up with sci-fi, my dad watched Star Trek Next Generation, you know, all, you know, and even the sci-fi channel before they changed it from S-Y-F-Y, it's a, it's a regular sci-fi have all the super dope alien movies and space movies and you know the one thing just in general looking at sci-fi movies um is that a lot of them were from books the power of writing books is the ability to inspire and do these type of things where somebody can read it and just be like you know what that isn't it's not too far fetched, you know. Let me let let me put this in the right hands and make this a reality. One thing that I will say is that I think that you know, and this is just you know something that I've been told, um, you know, quite a bit, and I've implemented it in my own uh, writing career, and it's definitely it's paying off. Definitely, um, what you have to do is essentially the work. Um, and what I mean by that is you have to you have to get out there and talk to people. You have to, you know, show people what you're doing. You have to, you know, make yourself known as far as, you know, like, hey, I'm a writer, you know, I'm doing whatever. Um, you, can't, you can't necessarily um, sit back anymore and just hope the right person reads your stuff and that, you know, word of mouth just explodes and then you become, you know, the next uh, J.K. Rowling or George R. R. Martin or whatever. Um, <clears throat> the way it generally works now is that you have to create a buzz for yourself. Um, you can't sit on your laurels and just hope that things go well. You have to, you know, join book clubs and say, hey, guess what? I wrote a book too. But, you know, let's put my book in your, let's make my book part of your, uh, your monthly reading. Um, you have to, uh, you know, you have to just really put yourself out there and, you know, get your social media together, you know, like your Facebook likes, your Instagram, all that stuff. And, you know, once, uh, 
once a publishing house sees that you've created this much buzz on your own and that this many people have invested in you without their help, they know that they can make even more money from you and even give you more exposure with their help. And that's generally how it's done now. I mean, we're not all, uh, you know, we're not all that, that, uh, that rich kid who got a chance to go to a particular writing workshop. Or, you know, we're not that person who, you know, graduated from Stanford with like Issa Rae and then all of a sudden, you know, she gets to take all her friends along her journey with her and, you know, you know, we're, you know, a lot of us aren't in that position. Um, a lot of us are in the position of, hey, I just tried, th I just tried this writing thing. Let's see what works. Let's see what happens. And if you're in that situation, just like me, um, you've got to, you've got to let go of the old notions of being discovered. You've got to let go of the old notions of, you know, becoming published um, in the traditional sense. And you've got to attack it on your own and let the, uh, let the publishing companies and let the general public see that you've created enough of a buzz on your own without them to be successful. Because people always want to jump on the bandwagon of success. And that's, that's really how I feel with Black Riders to get more visibility now. I mean, because the thing is, you, oh, another thing, sorry, one more thing. The other thing that I think that a lot of black writers could do to, to get more visibility is to create better work. And, you know, because a lot of times, you know, I've noticed that with a lot of, uh, a lot of my fellow writers, they'll, they'll sit there and write something half-hearted, or they'll sit there and write something haphazardly, and it won't necessarily be their best, you know, with that being said, you know, those are the, those are just some of the things I think that uh, black artists can do to, um, you know, get more visibility. The same way that I did my book, I was looking at it like, okay, you know, I know due to my experience through music that, okay, if it's in front of people, then, you know, they're going to be interested into it, you know, and you get in the right person to do the cover because that literally the majority of my conversions as far as people not knowing me or anything like that is strictly from them being alert from the cover of the book you know so that was an investment that is having you know like super benefits of that you know so with the with black writers you know there's this there's so much focus that i've noticed where there is like well we're not in this particular list or we're not in that and I'm just so like you don't realize like how much dope stuff is going on to where if you just focus on just like you said deliver good quality content you know and just realize like what is it that you're actually trying to do like if you're wanting to get visibility and things like that it's really just about doing things that get you visible you know so if you're in 2018 you don't have a social media presence you're not doing any type of videos you're not doing book signings you're not moving around being social you know you gotta get to the current like that's what's currently going on and it's like you're you're not gonna survive <laughs> you know like you and getting getting those things it's it's just where we're currently at you know you look at someone like Stephen King like the dude like throws out books you know and it's like you another thing that I feel like black writers would do as far as to be visible is just continue to put out work because you're just gonna get better you know, as a self-published, if there's anything that you're doing, definitely get an editor. But, you know, make sure that you just continue to put stuff out because constant content is what's winning in all aspects right now. Whether it's vlogs, whether it's movies, whether it's music, whether it's photos, constant visibility is like, you gotta be out there. So how can the black community better support sci-fi and fantasy writers? Encourage, encourage creativity, encourage, you know, daydreaming, encourage, you know, just that, that bit of wonder, you know, 
in the world. You know, don't just sit there and say, oh, well, that's not real. That's silly. And just talk it up to whatever. Continuing to encourage because, like, kids, when they're that age, they're sponges, you know, and being able to support that gift at a young age, not only are you doing that kid a favor, you're doing the world a favor. When I catch you, when you see a UFO, there we go, there we go. When you see a UFO, there we go, there we go. I'm riding on the asteroid through the solar system, looking for a shooting star, hoping that I catch you when you see a UFO.